Receivables and Payables Basics Problem 1. Onion Company earned $9,500 of service revenue on account during year 1. The company collected $8,075 cash from account receivable during year 1. Complete and calculate the following. The balance of account receivable at the end of year 1, net income for year 1, net cash flow from operating activities in year 1, retain earnings at the end of year 1. Accounts receivable and accounts payable. Students have trouble when they first start off looking at this. And even if you're going out and practice, it can be challenging at times when you're trying to determine what the client is telling you in terms of information. We're going to approach this using the accounting equation, and then we're going to calculate all these respective items. So in terms of our accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus, and we're onion company, so we're just going to say we're a corporation here. I'm just going to say equity, but specifically stockholders equity later on. We're going to go through these transactions, just information given, and we're going to record these on the actual, um, the respective uh, accounts on the accounting equation. So we're told that Onion Company earned $9,500 of service revenue on account during year one. So we're first just going to start with that. And we'll call that the first transaction. I'll just say A, so transaction A. Well, in assets, what do we have here? Earn $9,500 of service on account. Anytime you see the phrase on account, you have account payable, account receivable. Nothing here says that cash is collected. So we do have an asset. We're going to have account receivable. So I'm going to put cash as an account, but that's not affected here. I'm going to put account receivable because those are the two accounts you're going to see that are affected in this question. So here, assets. $9,500 of account receivable is um, assets are going up because we have $9,500 of services that have been performed on account. So that means that these services are done. Client now owes us money in the future, and that's what accounts receivable, that's what it is. Any liabilities? No, we don't owe anything to anybody. So that's zero. And then equity. So because this is a corporation, common stock and retained earnings. Well, retained earnings is going to go up by 9500 and the reason why, remember, wire, W-I-R-E, the um, investments go under common stock, but everything else, the W, the R, and the E go under retained earnings. So here, retained earnings, 9500 We increase retained earnings by 9500 because revenue, we're recording revenue of 9500 so that's positive 9500 increase to retained earnings because revenue goes up and revenue positively increases retained earnings. That's the first transaction A. Next thing we're told, and by the way, the accounting equation balances, 9,500 equals 9,500. Next, the company collected $8,075 cash from accounts receivable during year one. So we're going to call that transaction B. Next transaction, transaction B. We're receiving $8,075 cash. Any accounts receivable here? Yes. Accounts receivable is going down by $8,075. And look at that. There's no change on the other side. Both of these are going to be zero, zero, and zero. Those are the only two transactions. So now we're going to sum everything up. Our ending balance, let's put EB for ending balance. Our ending balance of cash is $8,075. Ending balance in accounts receivable is $1,425. Ending balance in liabilities is zero. Our ending balance in common stock, and yes, there is a balance here, but we're just going off the information given to us. That's zero. And our ending balance in retained earnings equals 9,500. And of course, the kind equation, everything should balance. And the left side, assets plus, I'm sorry, the cash plus the account receivable equals 9,500 equals the right side, 9,500. So we are in good shape. All right. We did the kind equation. For many reasons, I do a horizontal analysis when I like to show the approach. That's going to help us with the next set of questions, the, the, the various questions we have. By doing the account equation, it, it saves us a lot of time. Let's go through these questions. Balance of account receivable at the end of year one. We have that on the respective account equation. I'm going to change up the color. And for this part of the question, asking for the balance of account receivable, I'm going to use blue. That's this number right here, 1425. So the answer is 1425. Next, we're asked about net income from year one. 
Well, because there's just these two transactions, this is easy. I'm going to use green for this one. So the net income for year one, draw an arrow, retained earnings, 9500 the $9,500. Next, the net cash flow from operating activities. Well, we're given the cash balance and the amount of change during this in these two transactions. I'm going to use yellow for this one. Look at that. It's going to be the balance in the cash account. So it's going to be $8,075. And finally, our last question, retain earnings at the end of year one. Retain earnings at the end of year one. Well, this one happens to be the same as what we got for net income because there was just that one event. I'll use purple for this one. It's going to be the same amount, $9,500, the same $9,500 amount. So that's really everything. By doing the accounting equation and doing the horizontal analysis, it helps you solve these items. This question shows multiple things. It shows you that accounts receivable payable, not so uh, difficult, not so not not as I should say not as intimidating as you think. The the big issue that students have when they first deal with accounts receivable, accounts payable, is just understanding the language. Whenever you see the phrase on account, that on account language, you should know to trigger in your mind accounts receivable, accounts payable, one of those two accounts, and it's all about the flow. If there's services performed or something is being billed or whatnot, then it's going to be oh the an accounts receivable, but if the business is receiving an item and has to pay something in the future, a liability account's payable. The, another thing is that there's also a direction when it comes to what's going on, like the two difference in the two transactions. There can be the billing of items on account. Okay, we bill the services, and that triggers accounts receivable go up, and then the payment of it off goes down. That's usually what students have trouble with. So it's mostly about just reading and understanding what's going on. I try to keep this as basic as possible, two transactions, just recording the amount of accounts receivable and then collecting it. And again, we use the, account, the uh, accounting equation and the horizontal approach, going through the accounts and the horizontal approach to show you these balances and how you can solve for them.